What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, October 25th. Here's where we review all of our alerts, all of our positions for the week. And before we do that, let's jump into the community and talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to our friend AK. Congrats, AK. You got caught being hot. He's been jumping in answering a lot of other traders questions, sharing trade ideas. So all good stuff. Plus, I think he's posted one of the better uh, gifts in the community so far. It looks like a dollar riding a roller coaster. SPY. Love it. So congrats, AK. Keep up the good work. We love, we love all the engagement going on in the community, everybody helping each other. That is what it's all about. So let's jump into the alerts. Starting with Monday the 21st, and the first trade was an opening trade in DIA. So we put on a new iron duck in DIA with 11 days to expiration. And so let's take a look at the platform to see where we're at. Here is our DIA duck. You can see price has moved up higher since we put this on. So it's way up here. And um, so just holding this until next week, uh, November, uh, November 1st. So we've still got seven days to expiration. So we'll be looking at this uh, potentially next Friday or sooner. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention, and I, I actually just did another video on this that I'm going to be adding to the Iron Duck course, and that is, you know, at what point, you know, if price runs up higher, at what point do we just take this off early and book that beak profit? So I wanted to put some parameters around that. And so kind of what I've what I've come up with, and, and you can come up with your own parameters, but this is what we'll use for the alerts as it relates to iron ducks. And that is what I what I like to do. If you if you move your price slice from the break-even point, if you move it up right here to the edge of the beak and and then look at the probabilities from that standpoint, what I want to see is is that there's less than a 10% chance that price is going to go below that beak area. So in other words, we can get more profit than the beak. If there's less than a 10% chance, then we're, we're more, more likely, most likely just going to close it out and book that beak profit. Now you can see we're at over 25% chance of still being able to get back to that max profit zone. So on DIA, we'll, we're going to give this some more time for sure. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of Put that out there, and and you'll see that in the Iron Duck course, we'll we'll be talking about uh, more specifics about that. So look for that. That that video is being edited and will be put into the course here uh, here in the next week or so. Uh, the other pieces that we have on in DIA, we've got a couple of short call vertical spreads. One is way in the money, so we'll be looking to roll that next week or potentially. Yeah, we'll probably roll it. We uh, we're kind of using these for our short delta exposure. And then the other one you can see is is within range still here. So uh, just continuing to hold that for some more short bias. Next trade was an opening trade in SPY. So we added an iron condor in SPY out in the December cycle, which at that time had 60 days to expiration. And then at that point, we were still holding our other iron condor. So the very next alert, we went ahead and closed that one, booked over 50% of max profit on that piece. And so then we're still holding this one. You can kind of look at this as almost a roll. I mean, this one has five contracts. This one has four. But we were basically just repositioning this out in the next cycle. And so on the platforms, they don't support rolling four-legged spreads because that's basically an eight-legged transaction. Um, so essentially we just close that one out and then reopen this one. And you can see prices still well within range here, just kind of playing the waiting game, waiting for some more time to pass in SPY. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So we had an iron duck in SPX. Uh, as I mentioned, price continued higher. There was less than 10% chance of price coming back into our duck head. So we went ahead and booked a duck, uh, duck beak profit on that one. So we close that out. Now we do have another SPX iron duck on. So let's take a look at that. And uh, so this is this is kind of what I'm talking about here. So if price is way up here. So at what point do we take this off? So I've got my price slice set right to the uh, basically right at the long call. So 2940 is where this is set. 
And, you know, we've got about a over 11% chance that it might come back. So if this thing continues higher, we're just going to go ahead and close that out and book 135 bucks and move on. And that allows us to redeploy that capital and, uh, and put on another high probability trade. Next trade, opening trade in BA. So we did a an earnings iron duck. We are in the heat of earnings season. And so we put this on with just three days to expiration. Uh, BA announced earnings. Uh, at this point, it was the next day. But uh, today, when I'm recording this, is Friday. So this is the last trading day. So let's go. We still have this trade on. If we take a look, uh, you can see prices right here. So the plan on this is I'm going to go ahead and just let this expire. A couple of reasons. Um, one, uh, it costs us commission. I'm trading on TAW, so it would cost us commission to get out. And then, and if we just let it expire uh, with TAW's new uh, um, commission structure, there are no assignment or exercise fees. So if we just let it expire right here, uh, one will get exercised, one will get... Um, uh, assigned and they just cancel each other out and we'll just keep that beak profit in this case 55 bucks so that is the plan on BA now by the time you're watching this you will have already received an alert uh, letting you know that but I'm recording this with uh, we got about an hour and 13 minutes before the bell for the closing bell on Friday so that's the plan on BA so we'll end up booking a profit of 55 bucks beak profit on that one most likely unless something Dramatic happens and price comes way down and we hit a duck head, but doesn't look likely. Next trade, uh, we did an opening trade in RUT. We put on one of our weekly double calendars and we did this with the front week with eight days and the back week with 16. Now we used a shorter duration for the back week. So in the course, in the weekly income course, we talk about putting these on with six to eight days in the front week. And then back week having closer to between 21 and 22 days, uh, between 20 and, and 22 days. But in this case, I didn't, I just didn't like the risk reward. And that has to do with how low implied volatility is. Uh, so we went ahead and shortened up our duration on that back week uh, to give us a little bit better probability. The other thing I mentioned is we would exit if the loss exceeds 450 a contract, which is higher than that 25% like we talk about in the course. But because of this risk reward, we were able to give it a little bit more room. So I'll show you what I mean on, on this one. So here it is. Now price has moved up out of center since we put this on uh, with prices moving higher. Uh, and when we, when we put this on, we had a max profit of closer to 900. Now with implied volatility shrinking, I mean, just completely contracting today. Um, uh, you can see our break evens. They started out right here where the price slices are, but they've moved all the way in here and our max profit has, has decreased as well. So, um, you know, we've got, uh, about a thousand, a little, about 1100 bucks as far as our buying power, uh, to put this on. So, you know, if we get down about 400, 450 bucks, which would be somewhere out here, if it continues to the upside, or down here, if it uh, if it reverses, and of course, if it reverses, implied volatility is going to expand, and these break evens are going to expand again. So we'll see what happens. But we we, we want to risk only about four hundred to four hundred fifty bucks on this trade. Next trade, uh, closing trade. So we had a short strangle in oil forward slash CL, booked over fifty percent of max profit on that one. Great trade in CL. Uh, Earlier today, we actually put another one on, and so I'll get to that here in just a second. Next trade, we did a another earnings iron duck, and this one in Tesla. Um, we did this just with two days to expiration, and um, and this one just blew up to the upside. So let me let's take a look at a chart of Tesla, and that's the beauty of having this no upside risk because this thing jumped about twenty percent right after they announced earnings. Well, uh, no risk to the upside. So we just went ahead and booked that big profit and we were out. Now, the one thing I wanted to mention is I was actually looking at putting on a post earnings short put vertical, just like we teach in the course. If a stock opens well above its expected move, 
then a lot of times it'll continue higher. Now, I didn't put one on because this opened up so much above the expected move. You know, I typically like to be in that, you know, one standard deviation up to two, but this opened up so much higher that I just went ahead and passed on even doing that. However, if anyone did take that, you got rewarded today because it just continue to push higher. I mean, Tesla's on fire just uh, just in these last two days. You know, before the earnings announcement, it was trading at 253. Now it's at 327, just a crazy move higher. So uh, hopefully, you guys, some of you guys caught some of that. Next trade was a, it was the closing trade in Tesla. So we went ahead and, and booked that beak profit that I mentioned. Um, and so we are out of Tesla. And then the next trade, Amazon. Woo! This created some anxiety in the in the community. People were people were getting a little nervous. Uh, so I want to talk about that. So we did another earnings duck in Amazon, and with this one just with one day to expiration. And so let's take a look at our Amazon trade. Well, first of all, let's let's look at the chart. And this is the daily. So it right after earnings, uh, you know, it, it opened down here and it's rallied all day ever since then. But that doesn't tell the real story. Let's take a look at a uh, intraday chart. Let's look at a five minute chart. So this is this is overnight. So right after they right after the market closed, they announced earnings and this thing dropped like a rock. It was down over two times the expected move. And so if you can imagine, uh, you know, people were in the community were freaking out because price was way down here. I mean, we were going to take. Uh, pretty significant loss if if price stayed there, and it, it's so interesting to see people's emotions. Uh, you know, a couple of people saying, oh, "I'm never trading this strategy again," and you know, uh, blah blah blah. Anyway, a bunch of stuff. It's it's kind of it's kind of funny, but but the bottom line is this: I know I harp on this all the time, but it all comes down to position size. If your position size is small enough that even taking a max loss on this, I mean, we're talking 1600 bucks, so it's not like that's a tiny bit of money, but if you're putting this on and you're not willing to take, you know, a loss of, you know, we're, you know, our max profit 615, so theoretically we would want to exit if it got down 615 bucks. If you're not okay with taking that, then you shouldn't be taking the trade at all. You know, everybody thinks about the upside, and, oh, price is not going to move down that much, you know, Amazon's a great company, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, if you're not willing to take the max loss on this trade, you shouldn't be trading it, meaning it's probably too big of a trade for your account. Now, we only did one contract, and so you're saying, well, I can't really get any smaller, you know, and that's true, but if that's the case, don't don't even take the trade. I mean, it, it, you, you've got to prepare for the worst situation. Uh, now, what happened? Going back to the charts, so it was down way down here. And then around the conference call or a little after it rallied back up a little bit, still looked like we were going to potentially take a decent loss. Overnight, it started to grind higher and then into the open, and then it just took off to the upside. So I know a lot of people, well, several people in the community just closed it out as soon as the market opened, and they got out for basically a scratch trade. Uh, I know a lot of others uh, held it a little bit longer and ended up getting out at 30, 50, 60, 70 percent of max profit, which is awesome. Uh, we ended up we ended up just holding it. I'm still holding it right now. Again, we're about an hour, a little over an hour before the close. And most likely now I'm going to get beak profit. So obviously those who took their profits early uh, would benefit more. Uh, but I mean, this thing, I mean, what a crazy move. It, it moved from all the way, way down here all the way up into our beak. You know, it was, it opened and price was right dead center in our, in our duck head. And so I'm just kind of holding it and it started just grinding higher, grinding higher, grinding higher, and, and then popped up into the beak area. So, you know, good for, good for you guys who managed early, but really, I mean, the mechanics over time say that you're, you're better off just holding this closer to expiration. Now, uh, there's always going to be one-off situations where you end up taking a loss when you would have had a profit. And there's a situation like this where I'm going to end up taking less of a profit than if I would have taken it off early. But I'm I'm going to stick to the mechanics because I know the mechanics are going to benefit me greater over time. And I, I really think 
that as, as traders, you need to have those mechanics. You know, if you're just playing it on gut feel, oh, this one, I'm going to get out early, but next time I'm going to, I'm going to be mechanical or, you know, this time I'm going to, uh, you know, take it off for a scratch. Well, you missed out on a lot of profit, uh, or in this case, a little bit of profit, uh, by doing that. So I, I th you know, I think you got to stay mechanical with these things. I know it's, your money. I know it gets emotional. I know you're scared overnight. And so you're just happy to get out at break even. And I, I get that. But at the same time, you've got to stick with the mechanics because the mechanics are what are going to make you the most profitable over time and taking that emotion out of the trade. So congrats on everybody for, for those who did make a profit on this trade. Uh, like I said, I'm going to hold this all the way up until close to the close. Maybe we can get a little push lower back into that duck head? Probably not, but we'll see. There is a chance, about 28% chance that it's going to get lower than the beak here. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you will have already received the alert because I'm recording this before the market closes, but uh, that's, that's just kind of what I'm looking at here. Next trade, opening trade in BABA. So uh, Alibaba announces next week and what we did here is we just put on a pre-earnings long straddle. Now, this is where we're buying a straddle. So if you're not familiar with this concept, the only time we really do this is leading up to earnings. And the reason is, is because typically implied volatility expands. And if we can just get a decent price move up until earnings, we can uh, book a nice profit. We're never going to hold this through earnings because obviously we get the IV crush after the announcement. So we want to be out uh, uh, by 1031 next week on this one. But let's go to BABA and take a look at where that's at. It's up about a percent today, uh, but still, you know, in this range here. So we need a significant move higher or a significant move lower. The good thing about this, um, the implied volatility leading up to earnings is it typically mitigates some of that theta decay. So when this type of position, we do not like theta decaying. And so you can see if I put my my marker right there, you've seen you've got not minus 99 in theta. So we want this to happen fairly quickly. And, and the reason I like to put this on, let's go back to a daily chart in this situation is look what applied volatility has been doing. I mean, it's just been contracting, contracting, contracting uh, before the earnings announcement. So we're hoping that next week before the announcement happens, we get a nice pop in implied volatility and that price either moves uh, you know, a decent chunk up or down. So that's the plan. If not, we're just gonna close it out right before earnings and, uh, and move on. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So we had a short strangle in, or we have a short strangle in SMH. It got down to 21 days to expiration. So we went ahead and just rolled this out to December, rolled our puts up from 116 to 120, and then we just kept our call strikes the same. So there's a little, uh, very little value left in the puts. And with 21 days, we just we just rolled the whole, uh, whole spread out to the next cycle. So let's take a look at SMH. And man, this thing's been stronger the last few days. I thought we were gonna get a little bit of a rollover, but nope, this market is unbelievably strong, just popped back up. So we got close to our break even. So this is where price is uh, right now, just kind of hanging out in the upper end of that range. And so we'll just continue to manage this as needed. I'd, I'd like to add to this, but implied volatility being as low as it is, I'm just, I'm not gonna add to this. We'll continue to manage this and adjust and, and roll, but unless we get a, a spike in implied volatility, uh, we're not going to add to it at this point. And then lastly, we did an opening trade in CL. So we jumped back in the oil pool and uh, sold a strangle there with 52 days to expiration. Applied volatility has been contracting, but it's still IV percent still over that 50 level. Got in when it was about 53. So let's take a look at that. It's going to be pretty close to where we put it on. You can see dead centered. Uh, so just uh, going to wait for some time to pass before we do anything in that trade. Let's go through some of our other positions starting with, actually, before I do that, I want to mention uh, going back to these earnings iron ducks and earnings trades, a lot of big earnings next week, including Apple, Alibaba, Beyond Meat, Facebook, Google, Shopify, all big liquid stocks that we can be placing these trades on. And so uh, be on the lookout for some more earnings related alerts and, uh, and, 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 uh, and in the community, people will be posting trade ideas for, for earnings as well. So make sure you check that out. 
forward slash 6B. This is the British pound. So we've got this adjusted strangle on here. You can see we, since we've rolled this, we're up uh, 900 bucks. We're still down a little bit on the trade, uh, a couple hundred bucks. So if we could get a little bit more down movement, a little bit more theta decay, we'll be in good shape here. We've got yeah, we've still got 42 days to expiration on this piece. So not looking to roll out in time, but uh, uh, just looking for some more time to pass. ES, we've got this uh, long, uh, long put vertical. And you can see with the strong market, price has moved out of range. So we'll look to potentially roll this one next week, extend duration. We're keeping this on for that short delta exposure. In gold, we've got an iron condor. Now this one could could be taking off, taken off here. We're a little over about 50% of max profit. I haven't taken it off yet because uh, just trying to collect a little bit more theta. The other thing is, um, if you look at the options, the January options have not come out yet. So I do wanna add to this one. Uh, the implied volatility continues to stay high in gold. Uh, but you can see it goes from December to February with 95. So there's nowhere to really reposition this one yet. So we're just kind of holding on, letting for some more time to pass. Nothing wrong with booking a little bit more profits potentially. Um, so that's the plan in gold. In Natty Gas, we've got these two different uh, pieces of our short strangle. They've got 31 days to expiration. So really just holding these, waiting for some more time to pass. Could use a little bit more up movement to get back into center. Uh, but in good shape there. ZB, we've got this adjusted um, short strangle in ZB, trying to get back to profits in bonds. And uh, could use a little bit of up movement in bonds to benefit that piece. Now we are at 28 days. So, you know, by next Friday, we will roll this, um, roll this out to the next cycle. So look for that late next week. And if we look at the... Uh, let me go to TLT. You want to look at where the implied volatility is. So we're still really high. IV percentile of 73. You know, so we may look to add to this bond position. So if price can, oops, I'm not sure what happened there. If price continues lower, you know, around this area here, we might look to add another centered uh, strangle on there, assuming implied volatility continues to stay high. Uh, so that's the plan going into next week. Then in wheat, we've got two pieces here. One of which is a uh, previous part of an iron condor, which is a short call vertical. You can see prices come back into range for us, which is good. If we get a little bit more down movement, we'll just go ahead and close that one out. And then we've got another centered iron condor here, uh, where you can see we've got some profit, but not enough to take off yet. So just playing the waiting game on that piece. Apple which announces earnings next week has got, uh, we've got this long put vertical on. We've been just holding this for that short Delta exposure. We'll continue to do so. I mean, Apple's just been on a tremendous run again. And so hopefully we get a little bit of a relief pullback, uh, after the earnings announcement, we'll see, we'll just continue to manage, uh, as is we're just, again, we're holding it for that short Delta exposure and we're at about two and a half to one on that ratio for, so for all you new members, we like to keep a ratio of short Delta in our portfolio to help protect us from those vicious downside moves. So we, so, and we do that in relation to our position. So, uh, you know, a lot of our positions are premium selling positions. So we're collecting that theta. So we use a ratio of short delta or short bias in our portfolio, beta weighted to SPY. And we like to keep that in a range of about five to one. So for every $1 of theta, we like to have anywhere from one to five of, of short delta. And you can learn more about that. There's a couple of blog posts, how to trade options like a professional and managing your portfolio using Delta. Just search for those on our blog if you want to explore more information on that. I mentioned Amazon. Amazon needs to come down for me. I needed that kid on Amazon. Uh, BA, I mentioned that one. Uh, Baba, I mentioned DE. So we've got this uh, long put vertical excuse me, short call vertical in DE. You can see price is right here, basically where it was when we rolled it. So just waiting for some more downside to benefit that. 
I mentioned DIA IWM, kind of a similar thing. We've got it in this a long put vertical that we've been holding for short delta exposure or that we put on for short delta. Uh, it's, it's moved out of our range with this strong up move. So we'll see if we can get a little bit of a cyclicality, a little bit of a reversal into next week to help that one. IYR, this one's kind of in a similar position as gold where we've got a good profit, but just holding on to this a little bit longer, get a little bit more. Um, I was hoping that we'd get a little bit of a pop in implied volatility starting to here. Now, if we reposition this in the next cycle, I don't I don't necessarily need IV percentile to be up to 50, but I'm hoping to just get a little bit more, you know, at least above 20 to, uh, to help receive a little bit more premium in those options. So that's the plan in IYR to potentially lock in the profits in this one and extend it by re, uh, re-entering or re, uh, uh, yeah, re-entering it in the next cycle. QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals here. You can see price is just outside of our range, so just looking for a little bit of downside to benefit that. I mentioned RUT, I mentioned SMH, SPX, SPY, XLK, kind of a similar situation here. This one's in November. We've got 21 days to expiration, so we'll be looking to address this one potentially next week and, and roll that out to get back into a positive theta position. And then XRT is a short strangle. We put this on pretty tight. Uh, this hasn't been rolled or anything, so this is exactly how we put it on. Price has moved up near the, near the upside break even. And we've still got a little bit of premium in those puts in that untested side. You can see the difference between the pink line and the green line. So we still got a little, little juice in those. So I haven't, haven't made an adjustment yet. Now we are at 21 days to expiration. So we could have potentially rolled this out to, uh, to December today. I'm just going to give it over the weekend. If we see if we can get a little bit of a bounce, bounce lower, uh, before we do anything, if you know, if we, I mean, if we get a big move lower and, and we're at a profit, we may just close it, even though we're at not at, you know, the percentage of max profit that we're looking for, or we might potentially roll that one out. So we'll see, we'll see where everything is uh, going into next week. All right, that's all the trades. That is all the, those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Come back for earnings season, the heat of earnings season next week. Look forward to it. See you in the community. Talk to you then.